Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking a bit more about electromagnetic waves, this time about how we detect them. So we can see over here a picture of a human eye, which is probably the most familiar way to detect electromagnetic waves. Except, of course, it can only detect them if they're in the visible light part of the spectrum. In the rest of this slide, we're going to look at ways of detecting invisible pieces of electromagnetic radiation. Let's start off with the lowest energy type. Radio waves are, of course, the least energetic type of electromagnetic wave. We usually use them for communication. That's why we have radios, right? So they're produced by collecting an electrical circuit to a special kind of called an oscillator to an aerial. So the electrical circuit, called the oscillator, will oscillate electrons back and forth through the aerial. And this jiggling back and forth will produce radio waves. And so what will happen is that the electrons will vibrate back and forth and they'll create a changing electric field. And that changing electric field will create a changing magnetic field. The changing magnetic field will create another changing electric field. And so we'll get this pattern set up of electric fields and magnetic fields. And the whole set of fields will sort of propagate through empty space, or in this case, through the air. This is, of course, what an electromagnetic wave is. So by changing the frequency of the oscillating circuit, we can change the frequency of the wave that it produces. Now we receive them in a pretty similar way. Once again, we need an aerial and a circuit. When the electromagnetic waves reach the receiving aerial, they cause the electrons in that aerial to start moving back and forth with the same frequency as the sending signal. So we have a, a source of electromagnetic waves that has electrons moving back and forth and creating a wave of that frequency. And when the wave of that frequency hits the receiving aerial, the electrons inside it start to oscillate at the same frequency. So the electrons that vibrate will be vibrating at the same rate as the electrons in the source. Now if we have vibrating electrons, that of course means that there must be current flowing. So in fact, we get an electrical signal in the circuit connected to the receiving aerial that is exactly the same as the electrical circuit in the source of electromagnetic waves. So if we wanted to transmit a number uh, of, for example, kilohertz, which is what the frequency of radio waves is measured in, then we can start causing our oscillator to vibrate at, say, 400 hertz, and our receiving antenna will have its circuit start to vibrate at 400 hertz. So it's possible to transmit information. As we'll see a bit later, we can use this to transmit sound, for example, over the radio. As it turns out, we can also use it to transmit pictures, and that's television. But as I said, more on that later. Now, shortwave radio waves can actually be bounced off the atmosphere. And this is very, very useful for communication. We can send a signal to another spot on Earth, even if we can't see that other signal. If we want to transmit visible light from place to place, then we need to have a line of sight to the place that we want to send it to. We need to be able to see them, in short. For this, for this sort of radio wave, that's not the case. If we send an AM radio signal, then we can just send it straight up to the sky and it will bounce off the sky, so to speak, or the ionosphere, and back down to the ground. And this means that it's possible to transmit this sort of radio waves without being able to see the receiver. We can even sort of curve these messages around the curvature of the Earth. So the Earth doesn't get in the way of these radio signals. Certain wavelengths of radio wave will bounce off the upper, upper atmosphere of the Earth. Why is this helpful for communication? The answer, of course, is because it lets us get around the pesky curvature of the Earth, which normally means that the Earth is able to block any transmissions from going over the horizon. So it's possible to bounce shortwave radio around the Earth by firing it up at the sky and then effectively bouncing it off the sky and back down to the ground. So this means that we're able to send a signal around the world 
without it having to go through the earth, which would, of course, block it and prevent it from going through. So this means that we're able to send shortwave radio over the horizon to very distant receivers indeed.